whenever the laws of any state are broken, the duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. many duties of the highway patrol is that of protecting the delivery of money. Money is delivered in many ways, sometimes by armored car, sometimes by armed and bonded messenger. On July 9th, Henry Wigram, an employee of the bonded messenger service carrying a payroll of $20,000, started on his way from the bank to the Western Boiler Plant at Danville. This is the place. I've decided we got to get off the road. Get in. This is okay. Where's your gun? All right, empty it in the ground. Oh, you keep it in your hand. I told you, it just took good planning. A couple of minutes, we're going to be in the clear. Hey, don't hit me too hard, but make it look real. Oh, I'm just going to slug you on the back of the head. It looked like I outgunned you, ordered you to turn around, and then I slugged you. Now, get the money bag. Thanks a lot for your help. If we hear anything, we'll call you back. Thanks again. Highway Patrol, Sergeant Larby. APB, Henry Wigram. He's a payroll messenger for Bonded Messenger Service. Let's see, he's about 45, 10, 170 pounds, wearing a blue suit, white shirt, and a blue tie. He's reported missing with $20,000. He's driving a gray sedan, license number Mary Paul Frank 686. Have 3310 check south on 107, have 1512 check north on the same route. Western Boiler Company reporting an incoming payroll messenger missing. I'm Ralph Wilson. Thanks for coming over. Got a lead for us? Oh, not in his record. Clean with us for 10 years. No record of arrests. Himself, his wife, Alma, relatives. You got his own phone over here? No, Evergreen. 5635. Thanks. 
Get me Evergreen, 5635. Five. Wiggum lives modestly, 127 Elm Drive in Rexford. He stalls on his bills as long as he can, but he pays them. Good Army service record, honorable discharge. Hello? Mrs. Wigram? This is Matthews, Highway Patrol. Yes, I know. The bank called me a little while ago and told me. All right. All right, I'll wait for your call. No, I won't leave. Goodbye. What car does he use to drive the payroll in? Ours. He owns a red convertible, license number MPF 686. Western Boiler gave us a lot of information, but none of it will help. Mr. Wilson's given us everything but Wigman's birth certificate. Mind if we keep this file? All yours. Thanks. I'm going to start on Elm Drive. Mr. Wilson? Green 5635, please. Hello? This is Grillier. I was expecting your call. You and your husband playing me for a patsy. So he slipped you the real bag before he got to me, huh? Now you just listen to me, sister. You're gonna split as arranged. At four o'clock this afternoon as arranged. At the Maple Leaf Motel as arranged. Sister, you're going to split with me or you'll have so many cops blowing the whistle at you you wish you never met John Grolier. If you will only listen to me, we'll divide the money. We never intended to double-cross you. I've got the bag here in the house. I didn't even open it. We're going to stick to our agreement. Stick to our... What was the idea of handing me a phony bag, then? We didn't know you. We didn't know whether you'd keep your word. We knew we'd keep ours. For all we knew, you might have taken all the money and run. I bet this was your idea. <laughs> sure, I figured you for the smart one. Right? What's the difference? Someone's at the door. It must be the policeman who called me before. Yes. Matthews, Highway Patrol. Oh, come in. Thanks. Did you find Henry yet? If we had, I wouldn't be here. But he was supposed to get to Danville at 10 o'clock. I'm going to be frank. He was delivering 20,000 in small bills. Any reason why he should abscond with the money? Abscond? Well, no, of course not. Why should he? Henry's got a perfect record with the company. He's never been in trouble. He doesn't drink. The job's good and steady. This house is in both our names. Our equity's almost $6,000. And the car, everything. A man just doesn't run away from all that. No, I guess not. Henry's never been held up. But I've always been afraid there might be a first time. Mr. Matthews, it must have been a holdup. Where is he? If he's all right, where is he? We don't know. If we hear anything, we'll call you. Thanks very much. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Go ahead, twenty-one fifty. Anything on Wigram? Negative. Get me a make on him. Where he hangs out, who he goes around with. I also want a list of all his phone calls from the house in the past month. Ten four.
Hello, operator. Give me the Maple Leaf Motel on Route 23, please. Yes. Maple Leaf Motel. Hello. Mr. Grolier in room 7, please. Hello? Hello. Oh, uh, I'll call you back. Evergreen 5635, please. Hello? It's okay now. I'm talking from a public phone. I had to hang up. It was Mr. Matthews from the Highway Patrol. He's gone now. Did he suspect you? No. He was very nice. <laughs> Mr. Grolier, where is my husband? Well, just what do you mean? He should have called the police by now. You see, we got thinking it over. We thought it would, well, we thought it would look better if I tied him up, you know? No. No, I don't see, and I don't like it. I want to know where my husband is and why he hasn't called the police. Tying him wasn't part of the plan. Now, come on, come on, Mrs. Wigram. You bring that payroll over, I'll tell you exactly where Henry is, huh? Okay. All right. I'll come right over. Yes, I know. Room seven. Units of the Highway Patrol continued the intensive search along Route 107 for the missing messenger and his $20,000 payroll. His report on Wigram's last job before this one, it's clear. Oh, Mr. Wilson. How are you? Any luck? Straws in the wind? Pointing where? That he absconded. Leaving his wife, his car, his house, and everything else. Huh? Henry Wiggum co-signed an $8,000 note for his first cousin. The cousin defaulted, hasn't got a cent. And the holder of the note has been pressing Wiggum for payment. Now you're trying to prove motive. 3310 to headquarters. Headquarters by? I've found Wiggum. Half a mile up Mission Quarry Track. Ten miles north of Danville. Shot dead. Your motive pointed to the wrong man. Tell Waters I'm on my way. Headquarters to 3310. 2150 is on his way to your 1020. sure he was our guy. Well, again, I'm stuck with the job of telling his wife. Yeah. No sign of the payroll back. I figured if we found him, we'd find the money. The lab boys will be here in a little while. They'll give us a clue.
2150 to headquarters. Go ahead, 2150. Did Mrs. Wiggum call in, say where she was going? Stand by. No, sir, but here's some information that might help. On report of Wigram's movements, subject phone calls from the Wigram house. Records indicate a phone call to Maple Leaf Motel. Duration of call, 30 seconds. Any other calls? Five to the same number over the past three weeks. Half 3310, go to the Maple Leaf Motel. Check on Wigram's car. Also get a stakeout at Wigram's house. 10-4? 10-4. What do you mean by not bringing the money? What's the matter with you anyway? Don't you know when you pull a job, you've got to get away? Oh. What do you want to do, just sit around and wait for the cops? I want to know why the plan isn't going like you said. I should have heard from my husband long ago. Mrs. Wigram, where is the money? Now look, look, I told you exactly where I tied him up. One night in his car isn't going to hurt him. And if we don't settle up and clear out, I'm going to go to prison. And you are too. Did you hit him before you tied him up? Well, that was a plan, wasn't it? Hard? Well, sure hard. On the head right here. Did you leave him unconscious? Well, certainly. All he needs is a couple of stitches in his head. Mrs. Wigram, don't cut your own throat. Where's the money? Thirty-three ten to twenty-one fifty. Twenty-one fifty by. I have the Wigram car under surveillance at the Maple Leaf Motel. No one in car. Keep it under observation. I'm proceeding to Maple Leaf Motel. 10-4? 10-4. No. I'm sure Mr. Matthews didn't suspect either Henry or me. But well, why are you so sure? I can tell about men. Detective or not, I can hear a suspicion in their voice every time. Mrs. Wigram, do you know what a stakeout is? Watching a place, you mean? That's right, your place, for instance. Now, when you left, did you notice anybody or a car anywhere around? No. I could feel he was sympathetic toward me. Why should he watch me? And all the time, the money was right in your house? And that's where it's going to stay. Until I'm sure my husband is safe. Mrs. Wigram, you're playing a game that you don't understand. About 30, light hair, 5 feet 5. She might have been here to visit somebody in the past hour or so. Nobody's come in during. Come to think of it, maybe the man in room 7, Grolier, was expecting somebody. About half hour ago, he was sort of looking up and down the street. He said room 7. He's not there now, sir. He drove out about 15 minutes ago. A light blue station wagon. With a woman? I didn't notice any woman. Thanks very much. I'll try 7.
Headquarters at 2150. Headquarters at 2150. Headquarters at 2150. 2150 by. Stake out at the Wigram house reports a man entering. He drove up in a blue station wagon. One stakeout, man wanted for murder. If he leaves, arrest him. Have the corner in lab boys get out here right away. This is the Maple Leaf Motel. The victim is Alma Wigram. 10 4. 10 4. Still inside. Okay, let's go. You cover the back. cross all around. He didn't have it, neither did she. You won't need it. I answered the call at the Maple Leaf Motel. I wasn't needed. Headquarters sent me down here. I brought a knitting. Well, she knitted real good, didn't she? All right, take him away. Next week's Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. <laughs>